Good afternoon, everyone. I just recorded my whole sermons for the last week, all on mute. So what I think they would have been fascinating, but here we go. Here's the real thing. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to manage all the others, but at least you'll get today's. So here we go. Uh, we're coming up to the last two days of Pesach, and we read about the splitting of the sea tomorrow in Shul. So I was reminded of the famous joke, the story about the king who has a beautiful daughter, and uh, he wants to find a nice suitor for her, who will one day, of course, be king and take over the whole kingdom. So he has a big, uh, he has a big moat around his castle, which is infested with alligators and piranhas and all kinds of things. And he says he's looking for a brave young man to have his daughter's hand in marriage. He says, whoever will be brave enough to cross safely the moat and get to the other side will have his daughter's hand in marriage and one day be king. So needless to say, many, many try and fail. Some get eaten by the alligators. Some simply don't make it. Some have to be fished out of the water. Some run screaming out of the water back to the beginning. Anyway, goes on for a few days, a few weeks. And then suddenly one day, there's people gathered, a few young men trying. And uh, suddenly this, uh, there's a commotion. And they see this Jewish fellow who's fallen in the water, swims all the way across at breakneck speed, leaving all the alligators and all the piranhas behind, emerges from the other side, shakes himself off, dripping wet. The king goes over to him and says, what's your name? He says, Shloimi. He says, Shloimi, you are the bravest young man I've ever seen. You're the only one that made it across the water. You shall have my daughter's hand in marriage and one day my kingdom shall be yours. Young Shloimi, tell me, is there anything I can do for you to reward your bravery? He says, I just want to know one thing. He says, yes. He says, I want to know who pushed me in the water. We know from the story of the splitting of the sea that uh, Moses told them the sea will split, but nobody actually wanted to jump in until Nachshon, son of Amin Adab, jumps into the water, and then of course it splits and everyone else goes in. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about today, though. Though we all have to be Nachshons, willing to be the first one to put our foot in the water and not afraid to take a leap of faith. I want to talk about something else. Why do we read about the splitting of the sea? What's the big deal? Obviously, it was part of the Exodus from Egypt, but there must be something more than that. So what's going on here? Well, what's the story all about? So the Talmud tells us a fascinating thing. The Talmud says everything that exists on dry land exists in the sea. You have seahorses, sea lions, you have uh, corals, you have growth, you have plant life, you have marine life, you have biological life, you have animals. I don't know if you have mermaids even, possibly. But you have a whole ecosystem, a whole uh, food chain under the sea. What's the difference, says the Talmud? You don't see it. You just see a line of water, occasionally a little thing above the surface. But you don't see it. Whereas on dry land, everything is laid out to see. And it says this is a paradigm for what is known in Kabbalah, in Jewish mysticism, as the revealed world and the concealed world. The revealed world is the one we all see every day. That's the Alma Discalia. It's the world around us, the real world we live in, with all its challenges. But there's an Alma Discalia, concealed world, a spiritual world that we don't see beneath the surface. And there's much more in the concealed world than the revealed world. And there's a lot beneath the sea. You just don't see it. Except, of course, if the sea splits miraculously and you walk across the bottom on dry land and you see the walls of water either side, you're going to see what's beneath the surface. And that is the key. Because the splitting of the sea represents something that's very unique. Once, maybe in a lifetime, you're blessed by God to see what lies beneath the surface. I can't remember the figure, but I think most of us only use a very small percentage of our potential in our lifetime. It's the same idea. There's so much more beneath the surface. There's so much that we don't see. There's so much that's concealed. And if we could only see it and reveal it and use it, we'd be so much more effective. We'd be power people. We'd be more spiritual. We'd be more connected. We'd have more energy. But we don't. Most of us only live with what we see on the surface. We look at a person, we see what lies on the surface. You look at anything in this world, you don't see what's beneath the surface. You just see the superficial. And that's OK, because we live in a world where the spiritual is hidden. But it would be nice once in a while to tap into that potential. And that's what the spitty of the sea gives us. A glimpse of what lies beneath the surface, laid bare for all to see. And it's a blessing from God to have that opportunity once or twice in a lifetime to see what's beneath the surface, to see the true potential, the deepest depths. And so make the most of it. On those occasions when you are blessed 
to have a glimpse of the full depth of a person or a thing or an event or an opportunity. And you see what lies beneath the surface, not just the superficial surface externals. Make the most of it, embrace it and grab onto it and use it to grow and to reach the highest levels. That's the message of tomorrow's reading. That's the message of the Seventh Day of Pesa. It's all about freedom from limitations that most of us don't really get to what's beneath the surface. We just scratch it. But when we get that rare glimpse, like we do at the splitting of the sea, the Seventh Day Pesa, the festival of freedom, when we are released from our bondage, make the most of it and use those opportunities to reach those deepest depths, those highest levels. Hugsamayat.